Many of these beans are human or humanoid in appearance. They will take the, what we generally come to think of as two arms, two legs, a torso, and a head. Some of them come from other uh, planets, from other solar systems. Some of them come from Earth. They're indigenous to the Earth, and many times we don't really know this. Many of these beings that we're talking about, like the pixies and so forth, they didn't come in spaceships. They were indigenous to this land, and of course humans have become such a dominant species, we've sort of wiped out most of these races. Some come from outside of our solar system, like the Pleiades or the Sirius system or the Andromedian system or the Orion system. System. There are certainly living sentient beings in the third and fourth and fifth dimension on all of these planetary systems. Aldebaran's another one. <clears throat> Cassiopeia is another one, Draco is another one. In fact, there are 12 extraterrestrial races that seeded the planet Earth according to the Native American twisted hair. The Andromedians say that there have actually been some 22. And so that's a whole other conversation and maybe at some point I'll wind up doing a presentation and even a book on that fascinating subject. But other beings that have come to this solar system actually, I mean, from, to our planet, actually originated in our solar system. And this is, of course, the work of Zachary Zachariah Sitchin, who many of you may be familiar with. Sitchin is a, was a Hebrew scholar who lived in New York City, who was one of about 10,000 people in the world that could translate Sumerian cuneiform text. And he translated them uh, in modern times. Uh, many of these were discovered in the city of Nineveh in the 1830s. Um, there was a, a, an English explorer named uh, 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 um, Lord Laird, and he wound up actually discovering the city of Nineveh, and they found, you know, thousands of Sumerian cuneiform texts or clay tablets that have been preserved through thousands of years, but there were 22,000 that were found in the library, the high priest library, uh, not just the general uh, archive of weddings and marriages and land transactions, but sort of the sacred knowledge that was held at that time. This is at the time of Urshabhanipal, uh, uh, about probably about 6,000 years ago and um, these are the beings that we've come to know of as the gods in history the Norse gods the Greek gods the Roman gods the Egyptian gods and they seem to be uh, long-lived tall uh, human people very similar to us but with a larger brain capacity as we're going to see who had a problem with their ozone layer their atmosphere just as we have begun to develop holes in our ozone that we've been trying to clear and they discovered on their planet through their science that if they suspended gold uh, particles in the atmosphere uh, it would actually block the cosmic rays and this is something we've actually discovered that when we put gold foil sheeting on the uh, windows of the um, uh, astronauts space vehicles it does block their the radiation of the cosmic rays and so I'm going to be talking about this in much greater length in the next presentation that I'll be doing on angels and the Anunnaki because there's a lot to say about the Anunnaki gods and I know a great deal about it but um, these are the beings that we think of as the gods and certainly one of the things that's very uh, interesting about these Sumerian cuneiform texts is that they uh, believe that the planet that they come from is many many times the size of ours perhaps the size of even Jupiter or Saturn uh, but uh, that uh, that this planet has an elliptical orbit so that it actually every 3600 years comes close to our Sun and uh, at its uh, apogee and then at its perigee it winds up going very far away so they would have a summer and they would have a winter and so these are the beings that according to the Sumerian cuneiform text at least appear to have seeded the planet probably about 448,000 years ago so we'll be talking more about them next time so some of these beings also are from this dimension and from this world and I'm uh, talking about one that we would think of as the Hobbit uh, it's a three or four foot tall being uh, that they've discovered uh, in the last 10 or 20 years that uh, lived in a, uh, on an island. They've called it Homo florensius, and I probably misspell florensius here. Uh, um, but 
this the littlest human that we found, and it, it appeared to uh, be intelligent. It had uh, the same kind of skills as Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal, where they could make things. They were creative. They had villages and communities. We've discovered this with the bones. Their feet were larger than normal. The feet were uh, about seven and a half inches, much like we think of as the hobbits, but being bigger. So, you know, you've got to realize that probably J.R.R. Tolkien, at a soul level, had knowledge of this earlier period of time and was sort of drawing this almost out of the Akashic Records when he, he wrote the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Quite incredible. Here's another one. This is the earliest child. It, it, it's quite amazing. 3.3 million year old bones discovered. And of course, this, uh, this is a child that is a, a primate, but is uh, um, very early on our family tree. Um, so some of these beings, as we said, actually are third dimensional. Some come from other dimensions. I've always loved this image. Um, here is the initiate, and they are peering outside uh, beyond the veils of the third dimension into these other multidimensional higher realms. And if you're a hermeticist like I am, you understand that the uh, initiate that painted this uh, understood a great deal about symbolism. We have the sun, the solar energy. This would be traditionally thought of as the masculine. We have the lunar energy, male and female. We have the tree of life, and we have the center point, which is the great star of the coming. It's the light that exists within our own being, that we are tasked to awaken to eventually become the, the good shepherd. And you see here our initiate who's holding the shepherd's staff.